Hi everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget. Number, Hello. Number one thousand. Uh, one thousand. <laughs> Bad enough, sis. One hundred and thirty-four in uh, sounding the shallows. Yeah. I'm absolutely. afraid we're still coughing and spluttering and sniffing. We are. Um, and yeah, been to the um, Pharm- pharmacy <laughs> and got some stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I think we'll have to. So we're, but we're very pleased to talk to you. It's just we may have to go and cough somewhere at odd moments really Mm. and that was our unwelcome christmas present this year really wasn't it we bestowed our coughing greetings to everyone we met but there we are (laughs) but christmas has happened yeah do you remember your poem christmas happens anyway it happens in our house today it's good and yet i have to say for me there's something missing that Mm. really struck me this year adrian I mean, well, there were so many good things. And yeah. we heard some lovely things from people, didn't yeah, we? I mean, we, did, we had we a, an email from somebody talking about their nativity scene. And because uh, I mentioned ours and the fact that I love it so much because it was made by a, a women's group in Africa. And the figures are made from dried banana leaves and bits of banana. It's truly beautiful. Oh, we love it to bits, but there's yeah. some very unusual animals. Yeah. And she was saying that hers starts off being quite traditional and then all sorts of other animals sneak their way in. Well, ours, ours has a... Um, um, what's the stripy one? The, it's got zebras. It's got a zebra in it, pigs. which would be a bit surprised to Mary and Joseph. Yeah, they? but she said that <laughs> theirs has got a penguin. Oh, right. And also yeah. that this year one of the wise men has a parrot on his knee wow. and there's a hippo and a mouse. Maybe he did. Maybe. Maybe and I, I liked what she said. She said, Jesus welcomes everyone, and our nativity attempts to show that. And that's the sort of serious reason. But the other one is she likes to make people smile, mm-hmm. and she thinks it does. Yeah. And I, I love the idea of it, really. Uh, I prefer it to a po faced Mary dressed in blue and a, and a miserable looking <laughs> Joseph mm-hmm. who never moves and. Uh, but I think everybody's got their favourites. Do you remember uh, in in Yorkshire, Adrian, there was one Christmas when the snow was so deep that, uh, uh, that one village got completely cut off. Mm, so they remember, actually yeah. knitted mm. characters. But because they have a different knitting tension, mm. some of the characters ended up much bigger than others, That's right. which I absolutely yeah. love. I think that would have made... God smile. I hope so. I think bits, yeah, bits of chaos and unevenness along the way are, are not such a bad thing. <laughs> well, people they better not be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and lots of people we've heard from who did manage to spend it with family, and, and we did, didn't we? I mean, we managed mm. to scr- scrunch family in amid our boxes and our yeah. various things we couldn't we have find. One person who had a rotten time, didn't you? Yes, yes, we heard from somebody in Germany, didn't we? Mm. Uh, can you remember what she said? She it broke her right upper arm, I think, yeah. um, stumbling over a step backwards in church. Um, <laughs> so that was I, obviously part of the problem. Yeah, but what an irony, isn't it? I mean, then she had to have her sister come and look after her. Yes. And in order for her sister to be accommodated and all the rest of it, um, she had to do some major decluttering. I think the problem was her sister did it for her, which oh, made worse. it much worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, really, because that can make you feel so useless. And there you are with your arm, but also with your muddles. And she, she says, very honest, isn't she? She says, maybe you could pray sometime for me. And she says, I don't want to hear about God. <laughs> and uh, No, she I'm, says her sister doesn't uh, want said, to No, hear no, it doesn't want to hear about God. Uh, and uh, aware it's not a not a very good example of a happy resilient christian no. who attracts people to want to know him no um, well i don't know you yeah. sound lovely and yeah. uh, and and my experience has never been that people's muddles and failures put people off god smugness and arrogance too mm. so i shouldn't worry too much yeah yeah, and we heard from somebody whose Christmas plans went up the creek because they were in hospital. And because this year, it's like every year, isn't it? There's additional pressures and things. Uh, you know, the strikes have really affected 
Christmas for lots of people, haven't they? Mm. People didn't get their presents, they didn't get their cards, they didn't get to be with the people they wanted to get with. It's very hard to know where to put the weight of your moral perspective, isn't it, with all these things? Because, yeah. um, as I think we said before, um, the during COVID, we were so admiring of uh, NHS workers and still are. Um, yeah. But with the with the amount of, of, of claims at the moment, it's very hard to know where this money is going to come from. But, I know, uh, I know, uh, I know, and I did feel very much, you know, the the whole. Oh, I don't know how to put it really, but the whole centre of it all of Christmas, this baby, this little dependent baby that symbolised something incredibly huge but so so dependent and so small and yet for all the difficulties for all for all the feeling of of confusion mm -hmm. all over the world there are people different denominations mm. different different ways of thinking but still worshiping still using this day to celebrate something well as we've said remarkable. many many times in, in, on the face of it, you might say that the, the the birth the birth of Jesus, the journey to Bethlehem, and all the rest of it, it's not really terribly well organised. No. Um, but uh, out of it came one of the most important things, or the most important thing in the history of the world. Yeah. 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 But it's and, a bit hard to keep that keep that perspective, isn't it? When things are falling around, uh, falling. Yeah. A, a part around you yeah and I know from some people we've heard that is how they feel yes moment. yeah it isn't easy is it to always sort of uh, feel confident about the change that took place and you know there have been these iconic symbols of Christmas Day haven't there where where all the things that you don't have in common all the rivalry all the difficulty is set apart and mm. You know the the image of the soldiers playing football in the snow on that Christmas day. The First World War, you mean? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> but um, it's very hard when there's so much battering away at Christmas itself. Mm. I was just before we um, we started this. I was watching the news about Ukraine and just thinking, uh, in the context of that, I'm so grateful we don't have to put up with that and I uh, our hearts are torn by it they have been since the beginning yeah uh, it's really really yeah. hard to take what's happening yeah. there really difficult I mean I mean in theory the little period after Christmas is supposed to be a time when you do allow yourself to think about people who haven't got much and and to to weep with the people of Ukraine or to I mean, Boxing Day was a special day, wasn't it? Nowadays, Boxing Day equals the sales, but it wasn't that, was it? And football matches. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't that, though, was it? Well, but there was a question on a quiz the other day, wasn't there, about the origins <coughs> of um, Boxing Day. And actually, it was about giving, uh, giving gifts to your workers, the poor workers. I mean, I think it was yeah. actually the, the apprentices were given... Um, they, they would have a box and people would put a bit of money in so yeah. that that was part of thinking about other people um, yeah. And, yeah. and then St Stephen's Day which uh, celebrates the first Christian martyr famous for caring for the poor I mean I think for an awful lot of us in this country it, it's just sort of good King Wenceslas looking out yeah. on the feast of Stephen and uh, it was more to do with his page boy and everything, but that still symbolised something kind mm. of special, didn't it? Mm. I don't know. What do we do with it all, Adrian? I mean, I know you're feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment. Well, it's, there's so much has gone on with us, and, and, and we're still waiting to see <coughs> where we go with Moving House and all that, but actually, uh, it's probably the amount of of angst this produces in, in Christians is is um, I suppose 
shows how far we've got things the wrong way round. What do you mean? Well, I don't know what I, you mean. One of the things, one of my hobby horses uh, is about the fact that we we have got into a situation with the way we look at um, faith and the way Christians live um, that, that we are in some way entitled to things that look after us. Um, yeah. And that we... Um, that that's that's the object of it. That that's where we're at. and when things go wrong, um, yeah, there is there is and bound to be a part of us. I know it sounds a bit rambling. Bound to be a part of us that says, "Where is this care of God? Where is the love of God?" When you hear um, left, right, and centre things yes. crashing around, yeah. But I think that's. I, I, there's this poem on my head which I haven't written but uh, it, it's it's simply called only in my head anyway so far it's called You Will Weep All right. Okay. and the, the the theme of it really is, is saying to people and I think it's what Jesus might have said you will weep if you want to follow me if you want to be part of it you will you weep, will weep. Mm. like Peter did standing in the shadows of the gate and yeah. Weeping because he'd let his master down, and he knew he would, and we know we will, and we probably have. Yeah. Um, and you will weep like Jesus, because D Jesus saw quite clearly what we often fail to see: the, the the gap between the bigger picture, which is what's what what is supposed to be happening to help everybody, yeah. and our personal situation, and what we would like to do. Do you remember, Adrian, just before Christmas, and it does fit in with what you're saying, really, uh, we said that we'd had an email from somebody who was trying to cope with the way he was feeling. You talk about uh, weeping, but are we... What about anger? What about j true anger? Mm. You know, when when you look at what's happening in Ukraine, when you look at Putin, when you look at what power has done, when you look at the abuse of people, when you look at, you know, I, how angry are you allowed to feel alongside weeping mm. for the people who've been hurt? And ever since I had that email, I've been thinking about it and thinking, you know, we only know of once or twice when Jesus got really angry. And that was when people were abusing and using the temple just to make money, just to mm -hmm. use small people, not to be good shepherds, not to care. So I don't know. I have been wrestling with it. And I think that there is something about and maybe you've got it on a shelf, you know, we were talking about how it, but may, but allowing yourself to look at it and really allow yourself to feel the things you're feeling. I mean, what do you think, Adrian? Well, I, I don't think there's any problem with feeling anything you feel. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it isn't about how you respond to things. What, how else would you respond to that? How else would you respond to seeing someone hurting and abusing yeah. somebody else? Yeah. Um, but we are told to forgive. Now, where does forgiveness within this, you know, where does that begin, if you like? Do you see what I mean? Do we forgive any way, whatever he's doing? Do we forgive, as the Jews would say, wouldn't they, that you do need a level of repentance from somebody? Mm. I don't know. Well, I, I, don't, I don't personally, I can only speak for myself, I see nothing in the anything in the, if we're going to use the, the New Testament for instance as a uh, a measure I don't see anything about automatically forgiving anybody for anything um, Jesus said if someone comes to you yeah um, 490 times I think it was yeah. to say sorry for the same thing you you are you are under an obligation of good but I mean his broad point and in his hyperbolic normal hyperbolic way <coughs> was that the the, if people want forgiveness, if they ask for it, if oh well, absolutely. Then they are entitled to it from us. Yes. Uh, what we're not supposed to do is to look at someone hammering someone to death and say, "I forgive you." I mean, that is a mm. nonsense. I don't think so. The the things yeah. that have happened in the news just over the last few days: one person knifed, one person shot. Yeah. Um, 
But you, you don't start by forgiving somebody, I don't think. You feel it. It hits you. It hurts you. And in your own family, if things go wrong, you feel it. Yeah. And you might have to put your feelings on a shelf and say, I can't handle this. It's too much for me. I'm going to have to wait and see how this re resolves itself. But maybe, maybe it is only within each individual of how, of how they battle to get to a point where they could forgive that the miracles happen. I I don't know. Well, that's a, that's another issue, isn't it? Is, I suppose is so. How the how the um, you know, if if you are talking about becoming children of God, if you are, if you want to use those words, or if you want yeah. to talk about the mind of Christ, which is something else we used to talk about as though we knew what it meant. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you are gradually gradually moving towards beginning to understand that there is there is a, a broad perspective of kindness and forgiveness and a desire to be of use to people yeah. to be to be really helpful yeah. and but everybody that, that is a part of that that growth yeah and everybody created has the potential to change I mean, we know that from what happened to St. Paul. We know that from what happens within all of us. So maybe what we should be praying for is not is not phony forgiveness, but that the Holy Spirit will find a way to enter into the hearts of those who are mm -hmm. abusing people. And somehow the miracle will happen <coughs> there. Um, feels impossible but then so does a baby coming on Christmas Day yeah. and t to change the world feels pretty impossible doesn't it so maybe that's what we have to pray we'd love to hear what you think about this because it's a big one isn't it really well it goes back of course to all the stuff we are taught uh, or I was taught about joy and I know we've talked about this before but about the 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 commonly preached belief that we are living the joy of of salvation <coughs> and the, the life of Christ in us but if I look at the life of Christ and you mentioned it just now I see um, anger I see hurt I see a point where he says my uh, now now my uh, my heart gives up in me and, and yeah, I'm so, so great. my grief is so great that it almost crushes me we're not talking. We're not talking about some s strange, fake attitude to life. Yeah. We're talking about real close, grainy, sometimes really tough involvement with the lives of others, and that's why yeah. when we mentioned weeks ago about you know the Halloween party and the light party, and how. And Jesus would probably have been at both. Probably at both, yeah. And he would have made sure he got into the Halloween party, uh, and 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 the, and the light party, and that's where we're at. Yeah. We're not here to say we've got it sorted. Uh, we have a a, a special uh, dispensation that means we don't have to undergo all these things. But we can say, and I can say, and I think you can say, there is something strange that happens that whenever you do shell the things that are dark and black and difficult, there is a space left uh -huh. if you declutter like that that says, just hold your nerve, hold your nerve, come out the other side and see what God has done. That's, that's the option for us. <sighs> Gosh, yeah. Okay, pretty challenging stuff. We'd love to hear from you what you've thought about any of those things. Yeah, and of course, New Year is coming, so I know. if anyone's got any ripe, uh, <laughs> what do we call it when we promise things? Uh, I don't know, pro ma promises. Oh, resolutions. Resolutions, yeah. If you've got any, any juicy <laughs> resolutions that we could hear about. That would be great. But it's no good just telling us about resolutions <coughs> if you haven't got some way of keeping them as well. Okay. So we'll nice we'll to speak to you that. soon. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.